Hello and welcome to today's Gong Bath. Thank you very much for listening in. Uh, today's session um, is a little bit special because it's um, one of the sessions that I call a reconnecting Gong Bath. So in these sessions, it's um, the focus is on reconnecting with ourselves, with our bodies, with our higher selves, with the web of life and the universe. And in these sessions, we combine the healing and restorative powers of the gongs and the singing bowls and their incredible ability to reconnect us with the universe. Combining those with breathing and guided meditations from Joanna Macy's The Work That Reconnects. Um, and if you haven't come along to one of these sessions before, um, just to give you a very sort of quick um, introduction to The Work That Reconnects. Joanna Macy is an American eco-philosopher and Buddhist and for the last 40, 50 years, she's been developing this body of work called The Work That Reconnects. And it's a, it's a kind of way of looking at the world and our place in it. Um, and it's also a huge um, collection of resources, uh, including group work and guided meditations. So I'm just going to read out Joanna Macy's own definition of The Work That Reconnects. The central purpose of the work that reconnects is to help people uncover and experience their innate connections with each other and with the systemic self-healing powers of the web of life so that they may be enlivened and motivated to play their part in creating a sustainable civilization. So before we start, just um, first of all, a couple of reminders. Um, firstly, just to make sure that you're somewhere where you're not going to be disturbed for about the next 50 minutes or so. Uh, somewhere where you can lie down and not be disturbed. And the second reminder is just to suggest if you are in a position to make a contribution towards these online gong baths, that would be really fantastic. Uh, I'm very keen not to put these online gong baths behind a paywall, um, but if you are in a position to make a contribution, even a very small one, that would be amazing. And the way to do that is to go to my website, sarasasound.com. And on the home page, there's a button you can click on that says contribute now. And you can then make a payment by PayPal or debit card or credit card. And just a very quick introduction now to the gong bath, um, mainly for people who haven't been to one of my sessions before, just so you know more or less what to expect. So I've got um, here in my home studio four large gongs and some Himalayan singing bowls and some quartz crystal singing bowls, plus some Javanese bronze percussion. In particular, I've got a metallophone here called a gundair uh, and some other bits and bobs of percussion as well. And the sounds of the gongs and the singing bowls in particular are really resonant and very full of complex overtones and harmonics. And those sorts of sounds are incredibly therapeutic, both physically and mentally. Really good in particular at helping to release any tensions or blockages that we might have, whether they're physical ones or mental ones. And also these instruments, when they're 
played in particular ways. They're very good at helping us drop into a deep state of relaxation. Some people call it an altered state of consciousness. And there's lots of evidence now that it's really important to spend time regularly in that deep state of relaxation. Very important for our overall health and well-being. So the idea of the gong bath is I'm going to play these instruments for you and all you have to do is just lie there with your eyes closed and enjoy it and that's all there is to it. At the end of the gong bath we always have a few moments of silence and that's a chance to start to process and integrate all of the sounds that we've experienced. And it's also an opportunity to spend a few moments really listening to our bodies, which is something that I think is really important and often we don't do it enough. During the gong bath, we'll probably get some extra sounds. They might be at my end here, or they might be at your end. And we can incorporate all of those extra sounds into the gong bath and enjoy and appreciate them as part of the experience. And that's our choice. So I think that's all I need to say as an introduction, other than I hope you enjoy it. And if you're not already lying down comfortably with your eyes closed, now's the time to do that. And we're going to start off with a guided meditation from the work that reconnects called Breathing Through. So just to quickly introduce this guided meditation, um, so basic to most spiritual traditions is the recognition that we're not separate, isolated entities, but integral and organic parts of the vast web of life. We can open to the pain of the world in confidence that it can neither shatter nor isolate us, for we're not objects that can break. We are resilient patterns within a vaster web of knowing. Because we've been conditioned to view ourselves as separate, competitive and thus fragile entities, we need to relearn this kind of resilience. One way is to practice simple openness, as in this exercise of breathing through which is adapted from an ancient Buddhist meditation for developing compassion. Closing your eyes, focus attention on your breathing. Don't try to breathe any special way, slow or long. Just Watch the breathing as it happens, in and out. Note the accompanying sensations at the nostrils or upper lip, in the chest or abdomen. Stay passive and alert, like a cat by a mouse hole. As you watch the breath, note that it happens by itself without your will, without your deciding each time to inhale or exhale. 
It's as though you're being breathed, being breathed by life. Just as everyone listening to this gong bath in this city, in this planet now, is being breathed by life, sustained in a vast, living, breathing web. Now visualise your breath as a stream or ribbon of air. See it flow up through your nose, down through your windpipe and into your lungs. Now from your lungs, take it through your heart. Picture it flowing through your heart and out to reconnect with the larger web of life. Let the breath stream as it passes through you and through your heart appear as one loop within that vast web, connecting you with it. Now open your awareness to the suffering that is present in the world. Drop for now all defences and open to your knowledge of that suffering. Let it come as concretely as you can. Images of your fellow beings in pain and need, in fear and isolation, in prisons, hospitals, tenements, refugee camps. No need to strain for these images. They are present to you by virtue of our interbeing. Relax and just let them surface. The vast and countless hardships of our fellow humans and of our animal brothers and sisters as well, as they swim the seas and fly the air of this planet. Now breathe in the pain like granules on the stream of air, up through your nose, down through your trachea, lungs and heart and out again into the world net. You are asked to do nothing for now but let it pass through your heart. Be sure that stream flows through and out again. Don't hang on to the pain. Surrender it for now to the healing resources of life's vast web. With Shanti Deva, the Buddhist saint, we can say, let all sorrows ripen in me. We help them ripen by passing them through our hearts making good, rich compost out of all that grief so we can learn from it, enhancing our larger collective knowing. If no images or feelings arise and there's only blankness, grey and numb, breathe that through also. The numbness itself is a very real part of our world. And if what surfaces is not the pain of other beings, so much as your own personal suffering, 
Breathe that through too. Your own anguish is an integral part of the grief of our world and arises with it. Should you feel an ache in the chest, a pressure in the rib cage, as if the heart would break, that's all right. Your heart is not an object that can break. But if it were, they say the heart that breaks open can hold the whole universe. Your heart is that large. Trust it. Keep breathing. Breathing through, once we learn it, becomes useful in daily life in the many situations that confront us with painful information. By breathing through the bad news rather than bracing ourselves against it, we can let it strengthen our sense of belonging in the larger web of being. It helps us remain alert and open whether reading the news, receiving criticism, or simply being present to a person who is suffering. For activists and those dealing most directly with the problems of our time, the practice helps prevent burnout. It reminds us that both our pain and our power arise from our interconnectedness and offers a healing measure of humility. For when we accept our world's pain as the price of our caring, it naturally flows into action without drama or self-righteousness.
So gently bring yourself back to the space. And notice the weight of your body pressing down on your mat or your sofa or wherever you're lying. And wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. If you'd like to have a little stretch. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes and slowly come up to a seated position. So I hope you enjoyed that gong bath. And I always suggest to people after a gong bath, if possible, not to eat or drink anything for about half an hour, just to allow your body a chance to really focus on processing the sounds. Um, and then after that half an hour or so, uh, you need to stay really well hydrated for the next couple of days at least. So please drink plenty of water or herbal tea for the next couple of days. And if you've got any questions or feedback or thoughts, anything, um, it'd be really lovely to hear from you. Uh, you can message me through the website. And thank you again for listening in to this gong bath. And hopefully you'll be able to join me again for next week's session. And I hope you have a really wonderful rest of the week. And see you soon.